Today in our 2017 Subaru Outback Wagon, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Eco Hitch Class 2 Hidden Trailer Hitch Receiver, part number 306-X7267. This is what our hitch looks like when it's installed. What's nice about this hitch is the only thing visible is your receiver tube. Everything else is completely hidden behind the bumper fascia. This can sit nice and flush with the edge of your bumper fascia so you're not going to worry about hitting your legs or your shins on it when you're loading and unloading the vehicle. Now this is going to be a class 2 hitch so it's going to work perfect for any class 1 and class 2 accessories. It's going to be an inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter. As you can see the edge of the receiver tube or end of the receiver tube has a reinforced collar to give you a little extra stability. However, keep in mind that it does not change the weight capacity. It's going to have plate style safety chain loops. As you can see they're not large uh, safety chain hookups, but they do give you plenty of room for different size safety chain hooks. Your hitch pin hole right here. This is going to be a half inch in diameter. This hitch does not come with a pin and clip. However, you can find one on our website using part number PC2. And with this hitch, you're going to have a maximum tongue weight of 350 pounds. That's going to be the downward pressure on the inside of the receiver tube. You're going to have a maximum trailer weight of 3,500 pounds, which is a trailer plus the load included. Now, I do recommend checking the owner's manual on your Outback to make sure the vehicle can withstand that amount of weight. And you're going to want to go with the lowest number between the vehicle and the hitch. Now, let's give you a few measurements to help you when deciding on any hitch mount accessories you may need, such as a bike rack or cargo carrier. From the center of the hitch pin hole to the outermost part of the bumper will be about two and a half inches. From the ground to the top innermost part of the receiver tube will be about 16 and a quarter inches. Now let's show you how to get this installed. First thing we need to do to start our installation is we need to get the back of our vehicle up in the air. Then we need to gain access to the rear hatch. We're going to have two screws. We're going to need to remove our tail lights. In order to do that, you're going to have two plastic screws right here. If you take a Phillips screwdriver, you don't need to put any pressure, you just want to turn them enough to get the head to come out. We'll pull them out like that. This is just going to remove this cover. We're going to have two screws right here, 10 millimeter socket. We're going to remove those and then remove our tail light. We're going to take our light and just pull back on it. We're going to have three bulbs. We're going to need to remove those. Top one will turn, pull out. Right here on the bottom, we're going to push to release the clamp on it. Just like that. And then we'll set our light aside and repeat the same process on the other side of the vehicle. Next, we're going to take a plastic trim panel tool. You're going to have a little cap here. Put it in like that. We'll pop that cap out. You're going to have another 10 millimeter bolt right here. And you're going to do the same thing on the other side. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to have a push pin fastener on the inside of each wheel well. I'm going to take a pointed object. I'm just going to use a small screwdriver. And we're going to push the center of it in. Push it in like that. Then we'll take our trim panel tool. And if you have a big enough flathead screwdriver, you can use that. Just watch using a screwdriver because that top lip there, that can break off. Next, we're going to have seven fasteners across the back of our vehicle. Flathead screwdriver trim panel tool works. You're going to pop out the center, and then we're going to pop out the whole thing. And you're going to repeat that for all remaining push pin fasteners. Now with an extra set of hands, we're going to start removing our bumper fascia. Remember if you have lights or sensors inside, you may have some plugs that you may need to disconnect. We're going to start at the wheel well, we're going to work our way in. We're just going to start pulling it out away from the vehicle. We'll have a plug right here. We're going to push in on the gray and pull out like that. And we're going to set this aside, safe place, 
to be reinstalled later. Next, we're gonna remove our bumper beam. We're gonna have four nuts on each side, two on the top and two on the bottom. We're gonna use a 14 millimeter socket to remove those. I'm gonna leave one nut partially installed on there until I get the other side loose, just so the beam doesn't fall off. Then we're gonna repeat the process on the other side. Now we can remove our bumper beam, we'll set that aside. Put our hitch into place. We're gonna put them right on the bolts that are coming out of the frame that we took our bumper beam off of. Then we'll take our bumper beam and set it into place over top the hitch. Then we're gonna have an eight flange nuts that are gonna replace the nuts that we took off. And we're just gonna install those on each of the four frame bolts that are coming out on each side. One thing to keep in mind is when you take this bumper beam off to begin with, there's a foam piece that fits on the front of this. We will not be putting that back on. And once we get all of our all the nuts installed, we're gonna use the same 14 millimeter socket to tighten them down. Once you have all your hardware tightened, then we're gonna to torque it to the specifications and the instructions. You want to repeat that for all remaining hardware. Next thing you want to do is the center tab here, we want to bend that up. We'll just take a pair of pliers. It's pretty flexible, so just like that. We need to cut out the bottom of our bumper fascia. For our instructions, we're going to start on this corner where we bent our tab up on our body. This would be the connection point on our fascia. We're going to mark our 7 inch spot and our edge. We're basically going to file that line. And then at the top, it's going to be 5 inches here. We're just going to put this here. Next we'll take a cutting tool. You can use uh, a razor knife if you want. I'm gonna use uh, a tool with a cutting blade on it. Just to make it a little bit quicker. I'm just gonna scrape the edges to clean off all the burrs. Next we're gonna have a little vinyl piece that's gonna fit on there just to kind of clean that up, make it look nice. Uh, what I suggest doing is cleaning up those edges with some rubbing alcohol. We'll just wipe it down like this. And we'll take this, we're gonna spread it apart. And slowly, this starts fitting it in there. Once you got it how you want, you just trim off the edges. Next thing we'll do is reinstall our fascia. Remember if you have unplugged anything, any lights or sensors or anything like that, make sure you re-plug them back in as you're putting your fascia back into place. What we want to do is we're going to start from the center this time and work our way to the outside. Make sure your lights, your light bulbs for your tail lights are not down inside your fascia. Next we're going to reinstall our hardware that's holding our fascia into place. So our push pin fastener that we took out of our wheel well, 
We pushed it in to take it out. This time we want to push it out like this. And you're going to do that same thing to the other side. Next we're going to put in our fasteners that go along the bottom of our fascia. One thing I do want to let you know is that if this center section is still in here, it might be kind of hard to get it in the hole. So if you take a trim panel tool or a screwdriver, pop this center section out, it makes this a lot more flexible to slide up into the hole. And then you just push your fastener back in. Keep in mind we bent that tab up so we will not be reusing it. Go we'll reinstall our tail lights. That'll do it for a look at an installation on the Eco Hitch Class 2 Hidden Trailer Hitch Receiver, part number 306 X7 267, on our 2017 Subaru Outback Wagon.